So there was this one photographer who actually asked and perhaps associated it with witchcraft. Eh, everything like so black, huh? so scary and witchy. Huh? Is this witchcraft? <laughs> the hardest one for me, I would say is the smallest one. Like your end moving on is like moths, butterflies and you have your beetles. Then comes your warm-blooded animals where you have little rats. Um, cats, dogs, and I would say the largest one is a horse where I have to preserve his skeleton. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> In a very brief form, taxidermy is the preservation of animals or skin, normally done for scientific purpose and also for private collectors, it will be an art form. I was very in touch with nature and my dad used to have little collectibles, butterfly and I guess that is where my interest started and you know as a young kid my brother loved to catch grasshoppers just to show us, just to scare us but you know everything fascinates me so I guess at a very young age I was exposed to a lot of insects and animals. Here we have this chimera bed, okay this doesn't exist. In nature, it is something that I put together, or you know, some of the pieces that you can have fun with. So um, there is two skulls attached together. Everything started also because I had a lot of free time during my master's degree, and there were a lot of specimens lying around. So that is where I started preserving the specimens because it's such a waste to let them rot away and also to throw them away. These are all crows. Yeah. Also, oh, so their beaks are black. Yeah. It is actually detachable. It is just a form of like protein on, on top of the beak. Over here, I think everyone is very used to <laughs> this pair of yellow legs where you can see the common minor birds hopping around. So this was passed to me by a neighbor's cat okay, that somehow feasted on the bird and left the legs. <laughs> yes! And normally people would ask, uh, are the rabbits alive? Are the birds alive? You know, so they were all once alive and then now they are preserved here. This was a leap of faith where I actually quit my lab job and also to pursue this full time. It is mainly encouragement from my friends and family. Someone um, once told me that, you know, if you don't start it now, well, when would you do it? You know, you are not young anymore, so you need to kickstart something, right? If anything fails, you can always start again. It is a very, very scary thing to actually quit your permanent job and to have no security and start something that is entirely new here in Singapore where there is a lot of stigma and people do not understand the art form. I do have some negative comments from people. One of the funniest one that I got was um, I was called an animal abuser because I kept the butterfly in a jar without feeding it and it stays there. So he asked like how are you keeping the butterfly alive without it moving? Some people associated my craft with witchcraft um, especially when you see my profile on Instagram because the background is always black in colour, everything is in a very dark, gothic setting. This is little Randall, okay? Um, I tried to save Randall on many occasions but then it really didn't turn out well because he was ran over by a car in the back here. Yeah, so okay, Randall is here to stay. The latest commission that I have was from a couple, a very loving couple who also have a couple of pugs. The pugs were married and oh, it's such a love story. So it is unfortunate that their first litter, none of them survived. The last one was brought to me for preservation because the first two was already cremated. So she was very emotional. She come to me at 1am midnight crying and she really really want to bring something back that reminds her of the little pug that was named Mango. Here we have little Mango who is sleeping forever and little Mango will be going back with her owners pretty soon. <laughs> I will always treasure the moment that I'm working with the pet and I know what is its backstory. Uh, do I have a favourite? Uh, um, I guess it's the one that can actually change colour. You see the, the purple? You see? Oops. 
some owners cry, okay? Some owners are jumping with joy to have their pet collected back. Yeah, but generally, um, I, share the, I share their emotions with them. So when they cry, I start tearing. When they're happy, you know, I get all bubbly as well. When I have negative comments, I get very emotional. Sometimes I shed tears, but I would try to focus on the positive and keep on doing what I do. And hopefully, it does help educate the public and also change their <laughs> mindset on taxidermy, on what I am doing here. It makes me want to create more beautiful stuff, more creative stuff, and also especially to help the pet owner to move on. This is something that I really, really love doing. I wouldn't want to stop this. And yes, this is what keeps me going.